dive into the meat of today's session, I do want to pass it over to Walt for a few opening slides on Seastore. Walt? Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Kim. A uh, little bit about C-Store. Um, first of all, TechWise is really C-Store's way. It's our platform of providing education and intelligence to help you make better decisions. So really good way of learning a little bit about our industry and making things better for you. C-Store basically is a company that I'm really excited to be at. We've been in business for 15 years, and what's cool about that is that 15 years ago, Bill and Pete, the founders of our company, established a culture that we, we use the same culture today that we did 15 years ago. And our approach in that culture is basically to develop the best of breed uh, partners, best of breed technology to help meet your business needs in a cost-effective manner. So it's that vendor agnostic approach that our practice is, is to understand the needs and provide the solutions that make a difference to you. So we look beyond T. Really, this is a cultural statement. And that first line is really it for me, is we really do, as a company, put people on a path to success. And that means it's our clients, our employees and partners. Everything we do should be to make the, everything better for each one of those categories of, of people in our lives. So uh, with that said, I'll go off to the solution offerings a little bit we have here. Traditional offering on the right-hand side of your screen, that's what we've been doing for 15 years. That's what we've been doing really, really well. And our differentiators are really our services, our ability to deliver the services along the, the lines of the products and the solutions we have. Um, as well as I would be remiss if I didn't mention project management. It's that one thing that executives go, you know what? I will have a better chance of success with this project if I have project management delivering this as well. So cybersecurity and truth of transformation are two areas where that's my baby. Those are what, those are what I drive for the business at C-Store. So it's based upon your desires. It's based upon your input to C-Store of where you want us to go next. It's based upon the industry experts of what we should be doing. It's based upon our manufacturing relationships of what and how we should be doing. And we developed two really solid practices for you um, today. What's different about cybersecurity and digital transformation, by the way, is they're all focused on um, the consultative approach up front. It's very, very heavy consultative, a consultative approach up front. Um, so be prepared for some really good discussions about your business. Uh, not necessarily the technology yet, but the business first. Um, our offerings, um, like I said, you know, it's really our differentiator is, is, our, is our professional services that deliver offerings over cloud, um, over consulting, over data migration, all these issues here you see on the screen here. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. So the NASCAR slide, which I'm terming the F1 slide today, uh, really a terrific way of articulating who our partners are. And I will tell you that our, our strategic partner for the longest period of time has been NetApp, and there's a reason for that. They seem to be the one that always continuously looks out for the customer and what the best solution is at the right time, and we're going to have a discussion around that today. Um, you'll see a lot of new partners on these slides as we go through the next year or two. Um, those that are involved in cybersecurity solutions and those that have an ability to get you to the cloud, which is what we're going to talk about today. So today, before I, we go into this next slide that you're seeing right now, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Paul Cummings, um, who is, is really as representing NetApp today, but their technology and their thought leadership, more importantly. It's, it's their value in, in their theory and what they do and the practice of what they have to provide to us customers and as partners, that's really important. And we're really proud to be associated with NetApp today. So with that, Paul, um, I'll take it away, bud. Thanks, Walt, and thanks for the great introduction. Uh, my name is Paul Cummings. I'm a technical partner manager with NetApp. Um, I have about 18 years of uh, industry experience with backup, uh, data recovery, um, storage, and cloud storage. So what we're going to do today is uh, talk about um, AltaVault and how AltaVault can help um, revolutionize, uh, in a lot of ways, your, your current backup environment. So the first slide I want to touch on really quick is about our hybrid cloud, right? It's a fundamental trend of IT. Um, we're seeing this a lot. You guys, I'm sure, have seen this this kind of picture, right? You got your private uh, cloud or your private infrastructure on prem, and then you might have a public cloud. You're utilizing some AWS, another public cloud leveraging some Azure, and of course, trying to manage all of this and whatnot um, has kind of been a little bit of a challenge going for, uh, so far. So one thing we're doing at NetApp, and it's really funny, is somebody realized that 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 picture there really look a lot like our data fabric story, 
right? So uh, if you've uh, been working with NetApp um, recently, Data Fabric is is kind of our, our our big push and our big talk. And a lot of people say, well, what is Data Fabric? And what it really is is the ability for you to manage your data, what really matters, no matter where it is, right? So if it's on-prem, if it's in a cloud provider, if it's in an internal cloud that's being built in, you know, uh, on-prem or uh, at a colo, uh, it's the ability to manage that data um, easily and be able to move that data um, to leverage these um, your cloud providers or, of course, your on-prem uh, storage as, as best as you as you can. So. With that said, I'm going to step into um, the Alta Vault products, right? So uh, we'll get there in here in just a second. So common problems with traditional data protection. Um, like I said, I've been around this uh, this block for a long time. There's a lot of challenges, right? Uh, if we go way, way back, we're sort of talking about tape when that was the primary backup solution. For the most part, people are utilizing some type of disk-based backup today. Um, but again, you start to run into performance issues, speed, the, you know, the number of streams, writing to tape, managing that tape, um, moving that tape to a secure location. And then, of course, this gets expensive. Uh, as your storage grows, the amount of data you need to protect grows. Uh, this can get quite cost, uh, costly, uh, manage it on type, different types of disks or whatnot. And then, of course, risky, right? These tapes, uh, they fall off the back of a truck, the next thing you know, uh, you're in your local newspaper or worst case national news uh, losing uh, you know hundreds of thousands of uh, social security uh, numbers or employee data and we've all seen that happening over the last couple of years so you got a lot of risk expense it's slow and of course complex now you're managing a number of different technologies uh, if you want to get some data to this or to that you're using a different product um, you know you probably already have a, a, a built uh, backup solution today uh, that does 80% of what you want, or maybe even as much as 90%, but to get to that next percent, 10%, you're looking at uh, tearing it all out and a forklift upgrade, and it really becomes a challenge. <clears throat> so one of the first workloads uh, that we've seen moving to the cloud and where the cloud growth really kicked off right away, especially a few years ago with data backup and archive, right? This is, this is that, that simple easy uh, way to get into the cloud, okay? So instead of writing to a tape drive and shipping this tape drive off to Iron Mountain or it's sitting on the dash of Jim's truck as he drives it home, um, you, you start pushing it back up into S3 storage, right? Um, and that's been great and it's been a big, it's, it's worked well. Um, the problem is, is there's been a lot of disparate products needed or required to get the data up there and then managing it was another product or a different web interface or something else. And the complexity was really, uh, it's been challenging up to this point. Um, and of course, disaster recovery is another big piece of that uh, move to the cloud. And this is where Altvault really starts to come in is its ability uh, to help you manage all of this, right? So uh, NetApp Altvault is a cloud integrated storage um, uh, backup uh, product that's essentially uh, the go-between that sits between your existing backup environment that you have today um, and the cloud providers that you would like to use. Um, it comes in a physical storage, it comes in a virtual machine, and it also comes in a cloud-based um, uh, virtual machine or you know, hosted in the cloud. Uh, so you get a lot of options and flexibility with it. Uh, the physical machines are very common if you want to keep uh, on-prem storage for a longer period of time. Of course, the um, or the physical machine is going to have more data cap capacity, um, can store more data on-prem, um, which is useful uh, if you need to do a restore, of course. Most restores happen between uh, 7 to 14 days. Almost everything happens within 30 days when it comes to restore. After that, uh, the data is rarely accessed, right? So having some on-prem storage can really help with being able to restore that data quickly and easily. Now, if you don't have a large data requirement, we also offer the virtual machine options, which allow you to run Alta Vault in a VM, um, leverage your, your virtual environment today, quick and easy to set up. This is a 30-minute you know, setup, um, and really something you can, you can download and demo and play with today uh, to start getting your backups up to the cloud. Uh, so the virtual machines um, can back up that data, store it on how much storage you decide to, to provision for it, and then it'll automatically write that data into the cloud. 
So all three of these products, um, or the Alpha Vault uh, products, will continuously write that data up into the cloud, deduplicated and encrypted. Uh, and that's really important, right? So we're going to greatly reduce the amount of data going to the cloud. As most people on this call probably know, uh, deduplication works wonders when it comes to backup data because there's so much similar data. Um, also, we encrypt that data before it leaves, right? So it's encrypted in flight and it's encrypted uh, at rest, and the encryption keys are owned uh, and controlled by um, the by you, right? So by the by the customer on the Alpha Vault machine, um, so it's not managed uh, by a cloud provider. You're relied on their encryption. You actually own your encryption, and that's a big important piece of a lot of our customers today. And then, of course, we have Alpha Vault in the cloud. So if you have infrastructure in the cloud today and you're looking to back it up or you're looking to protect it um, in the cloud still, uh, we actually make Alpha Vault in the cloud uh, so you can use that to do your backups and protect your data that's already up there. I'll go into the cloud stuff a little bit more in a minute. So it really comes down to a few things here, uh, a few key points, right? So it's simple. It's easy to run, easy to get set up not a lot of configuration requirements. Uh, it's efficient. We talked about the dedupe. Uh, we compress the data. It's encrypted. Um, but two really big pieces are it's open. So it works with a lot of uh, your backup providers. Um, we'll go through a list here in just a minute. But we really support just about everybody out there when it comes to backup software um, and almost everybody when it comes to cloud providers. And this is great because now you're looking at getting into the cloud quickly Leveraging some Azure credits, if you if you have an ELA or you have Azure credits from Microsoft today, you're not quite sure what to do with, this tool allows you to drop it in, get your backups going, send them up there, leverage some of that capacity you have today in Azure um, or AWS or whatnot without a big forklift upgrade. It's going to work with the backup products that you have today. We'll talk about that in the next coming slides. And then, of course, secure, right? No longer are you shipping tapes around or writing up into the cloud uh, unencrypted, um, the data is secured and protected um, before it ever leaves that Alpha Vault uh, appliance or virtual machine. So this is kind of an eye chart, but this is a quick list kind of highlighting the, um, the backup providers that we work with today. I'll touch on that top one on the left here in a few minutes and a couple other slides, but yes, we can snap mirror directly from a FAS today to an Alta Vault uh, to send your backups up to the cloud and send your snap mirrors into the cloud uh, without the need of a backup product uh, for protecting the NetApp piece. Um, but we support all the big guys that everybody's familiar with, right? Your Veritas Net Backup, Calm Vault, Beam, um, so on and so forth. We also support some uh, Oracle RMAN backups. We support um, uh, Microsoft SQL. Uh, so you can see there we, we really support uh, the gamut. And then, of course, for public cloud and private cloud options, we support just about everybody out there. Of course, the, the 800 pound gorillas, the Glacier uh, S3 um, storage from Amazon. Um, but we're also seeing big, big growth in Microsoft Azure. Um, you have Cool Blob, um, of course, Azure. And then um, uh, we're starting to see a lot actually coming out of uh, IBM's Bluemix, which I think we call SoftLayer here. And then, of course, Google Cloud Storage. And then there's also private cloud options. So if you're looking to do this but do it to a private cloud infrastructure, um, there's NetApp uh, Storage Grid Web Scale and a number of other um, competition co uh, that we, we support there. So here's kind of a, a brief overview of how customers are using Alpha Vault today, right? So physical and virtual appliances. The first one on the top left is just your, your traditional backup modernization. And this has been probably the biggest growth piece uh, up till recently for Alpha Vault is the, the customers that are looking to protect and work with their existing backup products today, but remove that tape library, right? Uh, most of you have probably shrunk the need of your tape library down quite a bit, but there's a ton of customers that are still using it for weekly or even daily backups, um, and you could use utilize Alta Vault to remove tape completely uh, from your infrastructure. Um, and then also sticking with the top, we'll go to the top right. Uh, so a lot of cloud integrated backups. So customers that have um, 
uh, or I'm sorry, adding cloud integrated backups. So customers have purpose built backup appliances today. So maybe they have the net backup appliance or the com vault um, or you know uh, the data domain or something else that's being managed by a backup product. They can actually have that data right into the Alta Vault, and then Alta Vault will become that cloud gateway to send that data into the cloud, encrypted, deduplicated, uh, and compressed, um, all within you know their, their existing backup environment. Of course, uh, bottom left, we have cold storage target. So we have customers that are um, that are writing data uh, to the file store of Alta Vault, so a SIFS or NFS mount um, that they're just having that replicate up into the cloud. Um, so if they do need to get access to the data, that's still there, um, but it's more of um, you know cold storage as opposed to like a backup uh, type of uh, technology. If the file's deleted, it's deleted type of thing. Uh, and then, of course, there's archive storage targets, right? So your enterprise vault uh, from Veritas, SQL Server, Oracle, um, they can write their, their, um, uh, their archiving into an Alta Vault product, which then, of course, is putting it in the cloud automatically, but it's still managed from their enterprise vault interface. Um, so if they are using things like, uh, so enterprise vault has, um, I believe it's called FSA, uh, it'll leave stubs in the in the file system, so the files are still there. They click on them. All, you know, Enterprise Vault will pull that data back out of um, the Alta Vault, which if it's on the actual Alta Vault uh, virtual appliance or physical appliance, it'll come back quickly. If it's in the cloud, it might take a few more seconds to retrieve that data out of the cloud. So it's really a flexible um, product stack. It kind of you know, we call it cloud storage. Sometimes I'll call it, refer to it as like a cloud gateway, a cloud storage gateway. Um, that really gives you a lot of flexibility to work with um, your backup and archive and product you use today. So how cloud can help with disaster recovery, right? So you're leveraging Alta Vault today. It's sitting behind your backup product. You're writing to it. You've got some data on-prem for restore capabilities. Of course, um, the rest is written into the cloud. But now maybe you want to do a restore in the cloud. Uh, you have a requirement to do disaster recovery test. Uh, in the past, this took usually shipping tapes to some colo or remote location, sitting down, in, um, indexing those tapes and some other backup software that's at that location, and then start doing test restores. I know customers that some of these processes took uh, days or even weeks for some of my larger customers. Uh, now what you could do is you could spin up an Alta Vault um, server in the cloud, uh, send over the config file with your encryption key information and do the restores to virtual machines in the cloud to test your DR process. Um, so it, not only does it help with disaster recovery in the cloud, it greatly assists with that testing process and that management process, which really can be a nightmare. Um, I've had customers that had to ship, you know, 50, 60 tapes halfway across the country to some colo in New Jersey and sit there for seven days to do all the tests and make sure everything works, and they had to do this every six months. Um, so leveraging Alta Vault has helped them reduce that need uh, quite a bit of, um, of doing this. It went from a seven-day process to an afternoon um, or maybe a couple of days, you know, kind of half working on it while doing other stuff uh, while still sitting at their desk and not having to go to New Jersey in February. Uh, not to have everything against New Jersey, but it's February, it's cold. Um, the other piece is, of course, uh, public or private cloud, so they can do um, DR sites, um, so they could do the restores um, into um, from a public or private cloud into on-prem data. So if you wanted to back up your data in the cloud that you have today and then restore it on-prem for testing or have that capability, all the while basically can do the reverse of what we talked about on the first uh, part of this slide. Hey, Paul. Can I interject a question here? Yes, um, so we were talking about, you know, uh, the cloud. Um, what is there any? I mean, is there any restriction as to who, what partner you can go to? Can you go to Amazon? Can you go to Google? Can you go to anybody? Or is there a restriction on that in any way, shape, or form? So, um, if we back up a couple of slides, I do call out um, the cloud providers that, that we support. Uh, we recommend that we that um, our customers work with the NetApp uh, partners to actually come up with and design the best way of utilizing this, right? Because not uh, not every cloud provider is equal, um, and your your um, you know uh, your trusted partner that you work with, such as C Store, can help the customer really find out where the best fit is, right? 
Um, so we recommend to our customers that are interested in Alta Vault to work with a partner to review what they're trying to do, what they're actually trying to solve, and help them put the solution together, um, leveraging Alta Vault and other NetApp technologies with the backup product that they have today um, to really make sure they get the best use of that. That answer to the question, Walt? Yep, it did. Thanks, man. Sure. So moving ahead for time's sake. Um, so data fabric solutions, we talked about our, our data fabric earlier, right? It's, the, it's kind of our, I don't want to call it a marketing term, but it's the term we're using that covers a lot of our products. Um, AltVault is one of the products that enables the data fabric vision. Um, so here we talk about uh, how you can leverage SnapMirror, which is a built-in tools um, in our FAS and AFF units today, to directly SnapMirror to an AltVault and then that will send the data into the cloud. Uh, so if you have a backup product today that you know and love, that's great. Continue using that today. A lot of the backup products can manage snap mirroring and snap vaulting. Um, you know, Veeam, Veritas, Commvault, a few others have that capability to manage that process. And now you can manage that process while directing it into AltaVault. Uh, they also, though, uh, if they don't have this or if you're looking at something that's just a little leaner, um, or trying to, you know, keep some of your, your growing licensing costs down with your backup product today, you can snap mirror, manage through Snap Center um, directly to AltaVault and have that right to the cloud. Uh, and that really opens up a lot of doors um, for the customers, especially if you're an all or a mostly NetApp shop, of uh, giving you some flexibility and also gives you some, um, some negotiating leverage with your uh, backup vendor um, going forward. And then um, the second piece there, we talk about uh, how you can be snap mirroring from multiple locations into a FAS and have that FAS snap mirroring um, over into AltaVault. Um, this gives you kind of multiple levels of, of tech. You could have all of them snap mirroring into the AltaVault. It's not you know, required to have a one-to-one. -one. Um, but some customers have AFF uh, for their, their certain workloads, you know, very low latency, high transactional workloads. Uh, and then they snap mirror into a FAS, so they have a, a fast recovery there locally um, or maybe nearby. And then that FAS uh, also has the ability to push into AltaVault, which then sends it up to the cloud. Um, so you can really tier that data out uh, based off of um, performance requirements and, and availability of the data. So the last piece, um, around AltaVault is we added a new feature in 4.3, which is the, the current release um, that allowed our customers, if they have a large amount of data and they're looking to help um, avoid some of those ingest uh, charges and time uh, that it can consume, or if you have a remote site with, with smaller storage cap or smaller uh, uh, bandwidth, um, we support the ability to transfer this data over the wire into a snowball. Um, which is this, uh, I, think, I believe it's 50 terabyte uh, box, that uh, suitcase that uh, Amazon can ship to you. And then you can write the data to that and, of course, uh, uh, ship that back to AWS for ingest. Um, we work closely with Amazon, Azure, and all the big players. Um, and then I don't know... Um, one of the questions I got uh, recently was, when will this support the snowmobile? Um, I actually don't know if a snowmobile is really in use yet by Amazon, but um, but they uh, um, I, it uses a similar technology, just in a much bigger scale. Um, let's see, we got a question here in the chat. It says, is it SnapMirror only or SnapVault as well? Uh, right now, it is Snap Mirror only. Um, Snap Mirror and Snap Vault have, have pretty much kind of merged, actually, in the newer releases. Um, so it's Snap Mirroring, but it is indexed. So it's not a mirror, a, a whole new copy every single time. Um, if that answers that question for you, it's not. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. It's not. Uh, it's not the old Snap Mirror that we used to know, right? Where it was writing everything at once. Uh, or every time um, like it used to be. So, um, 
And we didn't talk too much uh, in these slides about our partnership with Amazon or with uh, Azure, but we are doing quite a bit uh, with Microsoft Azure also, um, including um, being able to run Alt Vault in Azure just as we can run it in AWS um, to uh, for restores or local backups of that data uh, in the cloud. Um, so uh, we do have quite a bit of integration with that. So with that said, um, I really kind of I think I hit on all the main pieces uh, about the technology. Uh, is there any um, other questions that we can open it up for and um, anything I can help you guys answer? Yes, there actually are, Paul. Thanks so much for the great information. There are a few additional questions we'll go through. As a reminder, if you have any questions, you can post them to the questions pane right now and we'll get to them. Uh, first question, will Vault work with my backup software? I think you had a support slide that says, can we see the support list again? I think you had gone to previously, was that 13? Um, so that's a, that's question one. All right, so yeah, let me pull that slide up and we can touch on it. Oops, no delay here, sorry. So um, as you can see here, we support a really broad list. Um, in general, we say we support all the backup providers. Um, now there might be somebody out there that has something I've never heard of, but um, in those use cases, you can write to um, the uh, NFS or SIS share uh, that you create on that Alta Vault to work. It, it won't be an officially supported backup uh, product, but um, I've known a few customers that have used some of the outlying technologies or some of the open source ones to write to an Alta Vault. Uh, but this list covers it. I mean, you can see it's uh, probably 95, 98% of, of the backup market uh, is represented um, here with our supported list. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, where are encryption keys managed for my backup data? So that's a really good question. I did touch on that a little bit earlier, but I know we're kind of moving fast. Um, so the encryption keys are managed by the customer on the Alta Vault product, right? So Alta Vault gives you the ability to own that encryption um, and be the owner of those keys. So even though the data is in the cloud, um, the keys aren't there and there's no way for somebody in the cloud, um, either through some type of exploit or some type of, um, of hack attempt or anything like that, they don't have access to the keys. It's AES 256-bit encryption. So you really can't get access to that data. Um, and that's a big differentiator versus some of the other products that will help you back up into the cloud, uh, where they either leverage the encryption of the cloud provider um, or um, some other technologies uh, to help them try to protect it. We really give you the key, the keys to keep that data safe. Excellent, thank you. Uh, we've got time for a couple more questions as they're coming in. Next question. What is the licensing model and how does it scale out? Is it consumption based? So that is a great question. So there's the licensing model is um, we sell the units and I apologize, I don't have a slide here that calls out the, the different capacities, um, but we essentially sell them in two, four, eight terabytes, uh, 16 terabytes, uh, virtual capacities and then physical capacities of course are larger. Um, and then that will relate to how much uh, cloud storage can sit behind it. Um, and that is, um, that's, that's actual capacity, that's not logical capacity. Um, the, the licensing model outside of that, so you buy the product from us in that way, the licensing model outside of that is depending who your backup provider is and how they license writing to um, a, uh, a disk target. Some of them license it, uh, uh, per uh, terabyte, some of them license it per node, um, some of them just, you can write to AltaVault as a basic disk as they would call it, or a, a standard disk target, so um, you're not paying any extra dedupe charges or upcharges that the backup providers might charge because they think you're writing to, uh, uh, to some type of disk target. I know some of them have uh, a licensing around things like if you're writing to um, uh, a deduplication target using their integrated APIs and whatnot, they'll charge you a little more per terabyte. Um, so we kind of give you some flexibility there. 
Um, we don't charge a consumption model um, for the Alta Vault. It's basically you pick the size you want, you buy it. Of course, you can upgrade it. Um, you can add more storage to the physicals, um, or you can upgrade the virtual appliance to a larger capacity if you need to. Um, but the consumption really is is um, how you purchase the cloud storage through your partner, uh, such as C Store, and also how your backup provider um, licenses their disk bag, uh, disk backup targets. Great, thank you, Paul. Uh, we will squeeze, I think, one more question in. Uh, can I run AltaVault as a virtual machine? Uh, yeah, so we talked about that a little bit back before, but yeah, you can run AltaVault in the virtual machine. It, honestly, it's, it's probably the most popular um, deployment of AltaVault is customers uh, deploy these as virtual machines, um, and they don't necessarily um, buy a ton of storage on it at first, um, just to try it out, right? So there's a, a demo you can get online, but once they get it running, it kind of becomes a cloud gateway, uh, and then they start to see the benefits of it and start expanding that storage capacity um, as a virtual machine and or moving to a physical, um, and it becomes kind of their backup go-to target for their, their entire backup environment as it slowly replaces, uh, well, it quickly replaces tape environments, but slowly starts replacing other disk uh, DDoP technologies that they might be utilizing today. Um, so, um, so yeah, yes, virtual machines are supported, uh, KVM, uh, Hyper-V, VMware. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Paul. That actually concludes our Q&A portion for today. Before we let everyone go, I do want to pass it back to Walt for a few important closing thoughts. Walt? Hey, thanks, Kim. Uh, first of all, great questions today, guys, uh, for our audience. Uh, really some great questions. And, and Paul, thank you very much for uh, for being here today to have the discussion and, and actually pique their interest in, in what's going on in terms of uh, AltaVault. So uh, I, I'd love to give you guys a free trial of AltaVault, but you know, more importantly, I think it's a great thing to have discussion around before you, you try something out. But obviously, you can do a free trial if you download uh, AltaVault if you want. Um, it's also a good opportunity to sit down with some C-Store solution architects and, and talk about what you want to do and how you want to do it. And uh, we can talk about uh, where we go from there. Um, if you do schedule a face-to-face -face meeting with a C-Store representative, um, you do get a $50 Visa gift card. Um, all, you can contact Chris Krieger out of the C-Store office here in, in Phoenix, and no matter where you are, uh, Chris will set you up uh, with a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, some more information on what's coming at C-Store, you can, you can check into our monthly events calendar, which you, hopefully you'll be getting in your email, or you can go to our cstore.com slash events and learn more from there. There's a lot more coming down the rest of the year, a lot of big focus on digital transformation. So look forward to seeing you at our next session. Thank you very much, everyone. Excellent. Thank you so much, Walt, and to our guest speaker, Paul Cummings from NetApp, and to everyone for joining us today. We hope to see you on a future C-Store event very soon. Have a great day.